When I came to SMU in 1960 as a young African-American female, it was, as my high school civics teacher would say, a learning experience. Um, this is actually where I learned that I was different because regardless of having seen the bodies of civil rights workers unearthed, regardless of going through a completely segregated school system, regardless of the white and colored fountains, I had never felt different. I had never felt any sense of otherness until an incident during my freshman year at SMU. The incident that gave me that feeling was um, a picnic that took place during my first week on campus. During that picnic, we all sat down in the park on the grass and not a single soul spoke to me. No one asked my name, no one said hi, no one said anything. So I had the most humiliating experience of my life, which was sitting on the grass all alone for two hours, completely unacknowledged. That's when I realized, although I might think I was the same, there were some other people who did not. One day I was walking across campus and past this beautiful two-story house and lo and behold in front of the house was a two-story tall Confederate flag. Now this was the mid-60s so I knew exactly what a Confederate flag was and what it symbolized. I just had not expected to encounter one on campus. As it turns out, this was the Kappa Alpha Fraternity House. Kappa Alphas, the KAs, are the fraternity of the Southern gentlemen. That's how they characterize themselves. And every year, they would have Old South Week. And during Old South Week, they would hang this two-story Confederate flag from the top of their fraternity house. Um, the week would culminate on Fridays with um, the KAs symbolically seceding from the university and they would bring that two-story flag over and hang it from the top balcony of the student center which at that time was Humphrey Lee and they would dress as Confederate soldiers and they would make fiery speeches um, and their tagline of course was the South will rise again. We approached the Dean of the University and asked that the school put an end to this because it was offensive to us. Um, he told us there was nothing we could do because they're part of the university. Now the implication being I suppose that maybe we weren't a part of the university. Since the school opted not to take any action against the Old South Week and the blatant display um, of what that meant on the student center steps, we decided to take matters into our own hands and so the next time Old South Week came around, we were ready. There, it was a big event. There would be hundreds if not thousands of students who would turn out to watch this spectacle. Um, that time, Jerry Levias, who was a star athlete, star football player, um, happened to go up on the second balcony of the student center and when the leader of the fraternity or the key speaker whomever he was said the South will rise again Jerry took out a pocket knife and cut the ropes on that flag and we just watched it float gently down to the ground and at that point we each pulled out our own little Confederate flags the little ones the like three by five ones and set them on fire and that was the end of Old South Week as we knew it